Hello YouTube, welcome to another League of Legends guide. Today we are covering mid lane Annie. You wanna play too? That'll be fun. Annie's a very bursty mid laner that can 100 to 0 squishies when she acquires some gear. She then has a game changing ultimate and is an amazing team fighter. She's very easy to last hit on since you can spam out your Q and last hit minions with it since you do get mana refunded. She's then very easy to pick up and learn and is great for somebody who's trying to learn that mid lane. Unfortunately, Annie's very gankable as she has no built in mobility. Very often she will be abused by those high range champions and when she doesn't have her stun up, she is very very weak. Despite her weaknesses, she has really good ganks and team fighting ability and one well placed ultimate in the late game can win you the game. For my masteries, I go 12 ferocity and 18 cunning, grabbing Thunderlord's decree as my keystone mastery. Annie's a champion who has a really easy time procking her Thunderlords, all she has to do is do a Q, W, and auto attack. By adding Thunderlords into this combo, your harassment is actually pretty decent. As for the rest of the masteries, well, you pretty much just want to focus on getting as much damage as possible, so you can instantly burst people. For my runes, I go Magic Penetration Reds, Armor Yellows, Magic Resist Blues, and Ability Power Quints. This setup's a great way of doing some extra damage with that magic penetration and ability power, yet have some nice tankiness early on with the armor and the magic resist. If you were in a really easy matchup, you could opt for cooldown reduction blues or ability power blues instead, but if you were against a higher range champion like Velkaz or Zerath or something of that sort, then you're really going to need that magic resist. Our first required summoner spell is Flash. Annie's a very immobile champion and Flash can save you over and over in a single game. However, it is even better used offensively to get a well placed stun from your summon Tibbers on an entire enemy team. Flash forward when you have 4 passive stacks and a stun available and land that Tibbers on some squishy targets. Now Ignite is a great option for our second summoner spell. Annie is a champion who wants to start snowballing once she has her ultimate and Ignite can sometimes add enough damage to finish off some kills. Now if you didn't want to take Ignite, Teleport is a great option as well, especially if your top laner is not going to grab the spell. Now your strength is definitely not split pushing, but this can still be great for teleporting onto a ward behind an enemy so you can get off a gank. So now let's kick off our abilities by looking at our passive, Pyromania. After casting 4 abilities, Annie's next damaging ability stuns enemies it damages for between 1.25 and 1.75 seconds. So this is where Annie actually gets her stun. In lane you're going to be able to start last hitting minions with your Q and when you do have your stun available you can go in for a more successful trade. You're also going to be able to sit on 3 of these stacks and right before you do engage activate your shield to get the 4th and then get your stun on a target. You're now able to see how many stacks Annie has so you're not able to catch people off guard as easy but it's still worth doing. So let's look at your main ability in lane, your Q, Disintegrate. So Annie hurls a fireball at the target enemy dealing magic damage on an 80% AP ratio. If Disintegrate kills its target, it refunds its mana cost and half of its cooldown is immediately refreshed. So in short, this is how you last hit, as it does obviously do a lot more damage than a basic attack, has its mana completely refunded as long as you last hit it, and its cooldown becomes only 2 seconds. You're primarily going to be using this ability to last hit in the lane, but obviously in team fights you're going to be using this on a single squishy target to add a bunch more damage. In a team fight though, try to not use your stun on this ability as of course your W and your ultimate both have AoE ranges and can stun more than one target. So now let's look at that W, Incinerate. Annie releases a cone of fire in the target direction, dealing magic damage to all enemies in the area on an 85% ratio. It's got a pretty decent range of 625 and a 50 degree angle. So this ability here is great for wave clearing. If there is a lot of waves pushing into your tower, you can use this and clear up a whole minion wave. It's then obviously got that AoE range, so in a team fight, it's great if you don't have your ultimate available to stun multiple targets. Then when you are going for harassment on the enemy champion, landing one of your Qs in a W followed by an auto attack is a great way to get off your Thunderlords. Really solid ability and we max it second after our Q. So now let's look at that last basic ability, your E, Molten Shield. Annie wraps herself and Tibbers in a fiery aura, reducing magic damage taken for the next 3 seconds. Enemies who then use basic attacks on Annie during this time are also dealt magic damage. So the damage reduction is up to 40% which is pretty damn decent and the magic damage has a 20% AP ratio. So this is a pretty decent ability and can make Annie deceptively tanky, but it's not as good as our Q and W. 
You can use this either to gain stun charges when you are wanting to go in for a fight, or after you jump into a fight if you already had your stun up, it's great to activate this ability so you take reduced damage when you are in the middle of that fight. It's a pretty nice ability, but we do have to max it last. Now, your ultimate, Summon Tibbers. When cast, you summon Tibbers to the target location in a burst of flame, dealing magic damage to all enemies in the area. He then remains on the field as a controllable minion for up to 45 seconds. The initial magic damage when he comes down is between a 150 and 400 base, plus 65% AP. The second cast just lets you move him around when he is on the field, but of course you could do that with alt click as well. So when you're jumping into a clump team with flash, this is what you're dropping on their heads. It's an incredibly strong initiate that deals a ton of damage and will stun the enemy team. But let's look at what Tibbers actually does. So his on-hit magic damage is between 50 and 100, plus 15% AP, and he also deals between 10 and 20, plus 10% AP magic damage to surrounding enemies every second. Pretty damn decent damage from both of those. When you are then out of combat for at least 5 seconds, Tibbers gains movement speed when moving towards Annie, and regenerates 6% of his maximum health every second. Tibbers will then also enrage on summon when Pyromania stuns an enemy champion, or when Annie dies. During this time, Tibbers ignores unit collision and gains 275% bonus attack speed and 100% bonus movement speed, decaying over 3 seconds. If Annie then dies while Tibbers is summoned, Tibbers instantly regenerates 50% of its missing health, enrages, and targets Annie's killer. He becomes pissed. So yeah, not only is your ultimate great for its initial damage, but Tibbers is actually pretty strong as well. All you have to do is stun a target and he'll enrage and gain 275% bonus attack speed and he actually does a lot of on-hit magic damage and can destroy people. I'm sure you've all seen that enraged Tibbers after Annie dies that just goes up and starts smacking the shit out of him. Yeah, it's because of his enrage and that bonus attack speed. It's really strong. For our skill order, we take a point into our ultimate whenever we can at 6, 11, and 16 and then we focus on maxing our Q. It's great for adding some poke on the enemy champion and of course last hitting. Then we focus on maxing our second damaging ability, our W, and then move into our E. You'll want to take one single point in your E at either level 3 or 4, depending on if you want more poke from your Q at 3 or not, or if you want the increased stun charges from your E at level 3. Now let's look at how to combo our abilities, and let's start with our harassing Thunderlords proc. Start by hitting the enemy with your Disintegrate, instantly follow up with your Incinerate, and then auto attack to get off those 3 attacks and hit them with Thunderlords. For our flash all in, we get to 4 passive stacks, which means our next spell will stun, and then flash onto the enemy. Instantly follow up with that summon Tibbers to stun the enemy, and hit the enemy with the disintegrate. Instantly follow up with your incinerate, and then cast your molten shield at any point during that combo. Of course, if you think it's going to be required, add ignite into that combo. You're also going to be able to stay at 3 stacks, and quickly activate your molten shield to quickly get your stun up, and surprise the enemy. In the early game, usually you're going to want to focus on last hitting until you are level 6 and can easily all in the majority of mid laners. She's very easy to last hit on since you can use your disintegrate to last hit minions since the mana is refunded when you get that last hit. Also, make sure you are harassing the enemy mid laner while you farm by using your disintegrate, incinerate, auto attack combo to proc your Thunderlord's decree. When you are level 6, you can try and surprise the enemy by flashing forward and doing your all in combo to start your snowball. In the mid game, try to take down the mid lane tower as fast as you can so you can open up some of the map for you and your team and then start roaming when you have your summon Tibbers available. You don't have a ton of mobility so your roams are going to be slower than most mid laners, but generally they're going to be a lot stronger. Make sure your stun is ready when you walk into the lane and then land a summon Tibbers on as many targets as you can. And also keep in mind you have flash and you can use it to get on top of them if necessary. When you manage to kill some enemies, follow up with either a dragon, tower, or if it's past 20 minutes, a baron. In the late game, teamfights are going to start happening all the time, and this is where you are at your strongest. Try and have your flash available whenever a big teamfight is about to happen so you can jump on top of as many targets as possible and get off a very strong AoE stun with your summon Tibbers. Even if your team is behind, a well-timed stun can easily win your team the game. If your team is ahead and the enemy is just trying to delay and farm, try and bait dragons and barons. You may be required to pick up an oracle alteration so you can sweep away wards so they have no choice but to face check. So now let's cover some of our hard matchups and let's start with Galio. Well, he scales off getting magic resist and this can really shut down Annie's burst. In this matchup, you're probably going to have to get your magic penetration earlier than usual so you can actually deal damage to him. 
Other than that, just don't get caught in Idol of Durand, because if you do, you're gonna get taunted, and you're gonna die. Next is Anivia, and it's because she's got a ton of burst, and makes you even more immobile than you already are. If you can dodge her Flash Frost, usually you're gonna be fine, but if she's landing it, you're gonna lose lane. Dodge this as much as you can, and when her Flash Frost is down, it's time to engage and go for a kill. Next up is Brand, and he's all about dodging skill shots as well. If he's landing his combos, you're gonna be stunned, you're gonna take a lot of damage, and you're gonna lose lane. As long as you can manage to dodge these skill shots, you're gonna be able to engage onto him when his skills are in cooldown, and get off some really easy, free damage. So now, let's look at some more hard matchups, and first here, we have Syndra, and it's probably Annie's hardest matchup. She outranges you, and if you try to go in for a stun, she's gonna meet you with her own, longer range stun. You're gonna have to play very passively until you can try all inning her at level 6. You may also want to rush an Abyssal Scepter, especially if she is landing her skill shots. Vel'Koz is then another long range matchup that can give Annie a lot of problems. You're gonna need to dodge his skill shots as much as you can, and when they're in cooldown, you can finally engage. If he is landing the majority of his skill shots, yet again, buy an early Abyssal Scepter to help deal with that damage. Last here, we have Zerath, another long-range champion that can poke Annie all day long. Do the exact same things that you did in the previous matchups. Dodge as much poke as you can, wait until level 6, and then try to all-in him with Tibbers. In any of these matchups, if you are getting bullied really, really hard and just having a miserable time, just try roaming around the map and get snowballing that way. Alright, let's finish this thing off with our item build. We start with a Doran's Ring, Health Potion, and a Warding Totem. For our core build, we get Rod of the Ages, Luden's Echo, and Rabidon's Death Cap. This gives you some ridiculous burst damage, yet a decent health pool from the Rod of Ages once it stacks as well. Now, if we do need Grievous Wounds because we're against like a Swain or a Mundo or something, we can get that instead of the Rod of the Ages, but if we do, I do like to get a Rhylice Crystal Scepter in that build, so I do at least have somewhat of a health pool. For our boot options, we have Sork Shoes, which is pretty much always the one I go with, as it does obviously get through some magic resist. But Aeonian Boots are rather strong as well, since you do get some CDR, and you can also use your summoners more often, which means more flash stuns. If you then prefer full-on mobility, you could get Boots of Swiftness. For our item pool, we have Hextech Proto Belt first. It's not an item I'm too big of a fan of, but it can work really nice, as it does close a little gap, and can get you in range to get off your stun. We then of course have Zonias like always, as Stasis is really strong, and considering Annie is generally jumping into the middle of fights, it works great on her. Next we have Rylai's Crystal Scepter, which is pretty nice because it will apply slows when you don't have your stun available, and give you a nice health pool. Void Staff like always will get through any magic resist, and then there's the Abyssal Scepter as well, which you may need to rush against certain champions. Leandris is then a great pick if you are against a really tanky team with a lot of health, and like always, we have the Guardian Angel, because coming back to life is super OP. For our standard full build, we take our core, and then we add a Void Staff to get through any magic resist, and a Zonia since we get some more AP, and the really, really strong activate. If we then needed a Grievous Wounds, we would take that instead of the Rod of Ages, but later on, add the Rhylai's Crystal Scepter, and finish it off with a Void Staff. Both are really, really strong full builds, and pretty much my go-to all the time. I very, very rarely switch it up. But that covers everything for our mid lane Annie guide. I hope you guys did enjoy the guide, and if you did, you can always thumb it up. And if you are new here, you could also subscribe. Make sure you visit our website, egamingtv.com, for a nice list of our champion guides. And you can visit us on Twitter, where we do skin giveaways, at egaming underscore TV. As always, thank you guys a ton for watching, and I will see you guys in the next champion guide. Peace. Uh, here we go, you and I, destination, who decides? Take off, crash, land, I, I don't wanna lose tonight Take a chance, let it go, will we make it, never know I, I'm so glad I kept you, could have left you, let's make room to grow Here we go, you and I, destination, who decides? Take off, crash, land